We're going to call. And Chad, if you wouldn't mind muting the folks who are not muted. Thank you, Chad, very much. Chad is going to be our helping us to, to do some moderating, or not moderating, but just making sure folks are muted on the Blue Jeans call. But um, we are going to call things to order at this time. It's 10.02. Uh, before we do the Pledge of Allegiance, just a, a note that we have our Turbo Bridge line, as we always do, but we're also doing a Blue Jeans call for people uh, who would like to join in on the block grant discussion. So we have that available as well. Uh, as we get, When we get to that point, we'll be able to uh, take some comments if anybody would like to chat or uh, uh, respond through the blue, the, uh, blue jeans. Uh, so if you would please rise if you're able for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. At this time, we'll look for any public comment on items not appearing on today's agenda, and we would give people five minutes to offer that public comment. Is there anybody who'd like to offer that comment at this time? And for our folks on the Blue Jeans call, if you did call in by chance for items not on the agenda, you can uh, put some information in the chat window, and uh, we can see your questions there. Uh, but we're going to be heading into the COVID-19 relief block grant in just a moment, so we'll be able to uh, take your questions then. Uh, but seeing no public comment for items not on the agenda, we'll look to approve our minutes from June 9th. Motion to approve the minutes from the June 9th Board of Commissioners. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion? Hearing none, all of those in favor say aye. 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 Motion is carried. Okay, uh, so we do have our uh, on our agenda our COVID-19 county relief block grant application. Uh, we're going to do a discussion on this uh, at the commissioner level and Margaret as well, and then we'll be able to open it up for any further discussion and comments. Uh, so at this time, we will uh, turn the floor over to Margaret for some uh, uh, comments. Margaret, if you would speak into the microphone, they may be able to, to pick it up better. Sorry. If you really, in terms of, yeah, they, they can, yeah, they were, they're not able to hear you. Sorry. Would you like yeah. me to start over? No, 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 no I think, yeah. Okay, no, I'm not going to start over. No. So, Center County's potential. Uh, guidance that was. Originally, we were told by today, basically, the guidance was 
health and substance abuse. Services. Over the night, you were up. Thank you, Margaret. And we're uh, going to have uh, Chad is going to be our uh, CIO is going to be dropping in the link to CNET. If there's uh, uh, so, thank you, Margaret, for that. If there's any audio issues that are occurring, uh, we are very pleased that the legislature, the governor, and the federal government were able to pass this, pass these funds and. We're being very diligent with how we're spending them, and we want to make sure that we allocate them in the best way possible, but also making sure that we're letting the grantees know uh, the requirements, because there are requirements in terms of how the money is spent, in terms of the auditing, and then in terms of the reporting that occurs. So we, we want to be as open as possible. Uh, we were given five days to get this back to DCED, so we're trying to be as judicious as possible in that time frame. And as Margaret discussed, the, the the nice thing about where we're at this point is we just basically need to give a broad perspective of where we're going to spend the money. And then as we get feedback from them on our application, we can start to put dollar amounts uh, to that. So uh, so we're, uh, we thank, we're thank very thankful for the community input. We've received a lot of letters and, and input from people. Uh, so uh, yeah, so very, very pleased about that. But I'll turn it over to Commissioner Higgins if there's any comments you'd like to make. Sure. Yeah. yeah again, very much appreciative of the uh, legislature and the governor. Uh, and of course, our um, Congress people and senators uh, for um, voting for the CARES Act and then uh, passing on 675 million to the counties that were in the initial batch of seven. I did do a fair bit of research on the uh, first seven counties that did receive the federal CARES Act funding and uh, couldn't find too much on Allegheny or Philadelphia, but the other five counties have already done a fair bit of work, especially Lancaster County had some nice documents. So I passed those on to Marlville. Uh, which will hopefully save us and our solicitors some time in uh, coming up with MOUs and things of that nature. Um, just in the past few hours, uh, we've received uh, a letter from the Happy Valley Adventure Bureau, which is our uh, main group that works with tourism. Um, he had a very detailed letter that indicated a grand total of roughly $2 million of potential requests uh, for, of course, not just the Adventure Bureau, but their members, uh, companies in the tourism business, uh, companies that are affected by um, the uh, pandemic. Uh, we also received help from Mel Curtis. I don't know if the two of you have time to peek at it. Mel has been doing wonderful work with the YMCA and I hunger program. Uh, I'm hoping perhaps that can come in under uh, some of our human needs. Uh, and then the uh, Penn State SBDC has been extremely helpful uh, recently. Um, they took a look at the uh, National Business Database. Uh, they also uh, estimated as best they could how many Center County businesses may have received either PPP or um, EIDL loans. And uh, they would estimate there's about 1,500 small businesses in Center County that would be eligible uh, for the uh, uh, County Relief Block Grant uh, Small Business Program that have not yet received PPP or EIDL loans. So we have a pretty good sized group of uh, small businesses in addition to the tourism industry um, that uh, could use some assistance and potentially would, would qualify. Obviously, um, for broadband, uh, there are some things perhaps we could do in the short term. The problem is the December 30th time deadline, but definitely would like to help the rural areas with broadband. And we have all of the human services needs, uh, potentially assisting our healthcare providers in many areas. Uh, we'll probably have to talk about, say, for uh, dental offices and other type of doctor's offices, is our assistance to them 
going to be classified under healthcare or is that going to be classified under small business? Because uh, I do know some dentists are dropping four, even five figures on reconfiguring their HVAC systems, negative pressure rooms. So there's a lot going on, a lot of detail, very short time deadline. Uh, so I'd like to thank my fellow commissioners and, of course, Center County staff uh, for working hard on this, probably uh, 12 to 14 hours a day since the guidelines came out. Thanks. Mr. Gershon, we'll turn it over to you. Well, I think that uh, from my, my uh, standpoint, the first thing we need to touch on is uh, is the administrative allowance. Uh, I, I do believe we as Center County are not well positioned right now to be able to administer $14.7 million and all the requests that we're going to get. So I do think we need a, an accountant slash gatekeeper pretty much going out of the blocks to uh, to help us it not only determine and track the, the expenses, but making sure that those uh, expenses are appropriate. One of the things that this, uh, this grant does not allow, and, and people should be very well aware of, is the fact that, that we cannot backfill revenue. And so but what we can do is mitigate some of the impacts of, of, of the COVID uh, crisis to uh, not only local businesses, and, 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 but also the educational and healthcare facil you know, facilities in our area. Uh, we also have, I think, a, a great responsibility to look at uh, what impacts it's, it's had on the mental health uh, and the human service uh, industries in our, uh, in our community. So I think we really need to look once we are able to take a breath, and hopefully that will be after today when we get this, uh, this, this, this grant uh, submitted, that we can look at how we best deploy these funds throughout our community to uh, make the biggest uh, make the biggest uh, impact. Uh, we can look at what other counties have done. I think Center County is a, a little bit unique in that uh, we have uh, Penn State University here. Penn State's a big part of what uh, what I would consider the lifeblood of our community. And I believe that we can work with Penn State and our local municipalities surrounding Penn State to make sure that they're successful, that both the students and the university itself have the resources they need to uh, get through the next few months of this uh, pandemic. So I I really would uh, I, I would really stress that uh, this is going to be a process. It's going to be a quick process, but I think it's one that, that, uh, that, that, that we can weather with the right, uh, right team put together. And I think that's the first thing that we need to do. Mm -hmm. as we move. So, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to try to do our best with uh, taking comments here for folks who are uh, on the line, we do want to let everybody know, and thank you, Chad, for sending it out. There is a live stream on CNET that if there are any audio issues or video issues, you can join the live stream of CNET. Uh, but at this time, we would be happy to take any comments from people uh, who would want to offer them via video. Uh, you can also put them in the chat as well, and we'll do our best to answer them. So, um, yeah, please, and if anybody would like to offer any questions or comments, feel free to do so now. Okay, so we're seeing no comments. We just want to make sure, again, uh, give it a, a second uh, try here in terms of any comments or questions. And just a note as well, we will be doing uh, one of these as well uh, at four o'clock today. So if there are any fine, if there are any comments that anybody would like to make that's on the line now or watching this later, uh, the noon TV broadcast anytime. Uh, feel free to, again, join us at 4 o'clock or email us, call us, social media as well. So seeing no other comments, I want to put one more uh, pass out there for any questions or comments. Questions yes. No, please. Oh, uh, please. Sure. I sure. Mike, when will we be taking the official action on the submission of the grant? Will that be at this meeting at 10 or at the 4 o'clock meeting? I think 4 o'clock, So right? we're clear yeah. at the, with the timeline. Yeah, four, you would need to, we would need until four, right? <laughs> Absolutely, yes, yep. And we've advertised it as well as, yes, yeah. Yeah, so we would, four o'clock. So yeah. with the yeah. input we've received from various entities in the community, certainly, um, uh, 
staff there at four o'clock on the third. And I don't think, I'm just trying to think, I don't think there was any community requests that we didn't include in some way, shape, or form. I think they're, they're covered in some uh, context in terms of um, somebody might have asked for this, but we, we might have steered it a little bit in that direction. But I think broadly speaking, the community requests we either had already considered or we may have modified it slightly. But the thing that we've also heard from DCD is as we go throughout the application process, they're going to give us feedback, and we may need to make tweaks to it. We can so, amend the yeah, application. Well, yeah. That's, that's good. Yeah. But no, at, at the 4 o'clock meeting, we would have a, a final product that we would have that would be uh, able to be approved, and then we have to submit it by tomorrow. So yes, we would. We would have, we, we would have some sort of, we, we would, we we would not. We have a final no? product. We'll have okay. To, okay. We'll have the okay. action to, to create the final product. Uh, that would be a video, but you can also put them in the to uh, make sure that we're getting value for our for our dollar. So if, if we can, and, and I know we've, we've had some discussion about this earlier, whether it's CCAP or some of the other organizations, how do we group spend money? How do we how we bulk buy, if you will, some of these things? You know, if we're buying masks or we're buying, you know, uh, thermo imaging devices or whatever it is, let's make sure we get the best bang for our buck. And I think we, we, there is some there is some power in, in numbers. <laughs> That's part of the conversation I think that needs to occur again very early so we get these orders in kind of ahead of the curve. All the requests that have come in are actually expenditures that are going to actually the grant allows us to go back to the first week of March. We know here at Center County we, we have a fair amount of expenses. Going back to the election, it may or may not be covered by our. Uh, look at every opportunity to make sure that we're, we're made whole. No, I do know. Yeah. <laughs> I want to say that since the session at 4 o'clock, we'll be able to hear additional um, requests if you want to have them. I do know some of the first seven counties plan to uh, spend the money kind of in tranches. It's not like, okay, in the first two months, right. we're sending all the money out. Obviously, it's going to take us a while to process applications. It's going to take us a while to put MOUs together. Um, and so we'll probably still have at least some money available into the early fall um, for uh, new requests that still meet the general guidelines for DCED. Yeah, I think just to sum things up, I think we're very thankful for the, uh, the diligence the state has taken and um, really, really supportive of the fact that we have some flexibility from the Treasury Department and also from the state, uh, but do appreciate the fact that they don't want us, they don't want there to be a double dipping effect or a um, overlap of funds. They really are trying to say, if you've received money in this pot, you really can't get it here. And so we're going to try to do our best again to make sure the grantees understand the obligations they're taking on. And we don't want to get them into any uh, any trouble or any, uh, we want them to be able to do what they need to do. We don't have to worry about all the red tape uh, for this. So um, again, we again, thank everybody for their participation. This look, looks like we do have one chat question, which is to clarify and to talk about those general categories. Um, and those really are the, the bullet points that are available in the DCD guidelines, uh, which are uh, anywhere from county planning and relief to broadband, uh, human services with mental health and drug and alcohol. 
So those are the general categories that we know that we can spend them on. But in terms of the nitty gritty and uh, down down in the weeds, uh, um, yeah, we're we're going to try our best to capture all of those again, so we know that so we can show DCD that we have a um, a, a plethora of the different kind of things that we uh, know that it needs in the community, but then allows us to be flexible as we go forward with this. Uh, so, the, the, but the general guidelines are planning and, and relief for the COVID-19 pandemic. In some way, shape, or form, the cost, the expenditure needs to come back to the fact that it was born out of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So, uh, thank you for the question. So, again, we'll be meeting at 4 o'clock to discuss this further, and we'll have the opportunity to do so. So, we, uh, again, we'll offer any uh, opportunity for public comment, and then we're going to move on with the rest of our agenda. Okay, seeing no further comments, we will move on to the rest of our agenda. Again, thank you everybody for joining us for this portion. Uh, if you'd like to stay on, you're more than welcome to, but if not, we'll see you at four o'clock. Okay. All right, uh, Margaret, anything on the personnel side of uh, the COVID-19 planning and response? All right, we're going to move to contracts then. We have uh, two items for MHID. Yes. So the action would be to add the two items for MHID, uh, the contract addendums to next week's consent agenda. For a motion for sure. Uh, motion to add the addendums in English, Latin spoil addendas, uh, with strawberry fields and community <laughs> residential services to next week's consent agenda. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion is carried. Okay, and then a risk management item. Ombudsman, alternative. Thank you, Margaret. Any questions on this item? That's great. Okay. Uh, would there be a motion then? Motion to add the policy renewals with Berkeley accident and health insurance next week's agenda. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion? All right, none. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion is carried. Okay. At this time, we're going to be joined by uh, Faith Ryan from our adult services office to discuss this next item uh, on the agenda. Good morning, Faith. Hi, good morning, everybody. Can you hear me okay? We can. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, well, thank you for your time, and thank you so much for getting this on today's agenda. Um, I had learned last Thursday about this new funding source through PHFA um, in regards to rent relief through the CARES program, um, federal funding, and we have until this Thursday, June 18th, to submit um, our letter of intent and a short narrative. Um, so again, I appreciate the time, um, and I am looking to have this uh, letter of intent or submission of it approved today if possible. Um, so just real quickly, a little bit about the program. Um, this is a pretty significant program. Um, the idea is to be able to help our residents with rent arrears or possibly even future rent up to $750 a month. Um, the families or the households would have to be, to be eligible, they would have to either be waiting for their unemployment um, to come in, which currently a lot of our families reaching out for assistance are, or they have to demonstrate at least a 30% loss of total income. Um, and this funding has to be spent by November 30th. So like a lot of the other programs you've been talking about even this morning, the turnaround time is pretty quick. Um, PHFA is looking for an agency in each community that currently or has experience running rental assistance, preferably through the Human Service Block Grant, which is us, um, the Office of Adult Services, and then also agencies that are familiar with um, operating federal funding, which we are as well. So this will be a program that will come out of the Office of Adult Service. Um, it will definitely be a pretty heavy lift, but we do think it's important um, for our community to have access to it. Um, I can assure you that we are all sitting back, holding on tight as human service agencies and community agencies to see what happens when the um, eviction and foreclosure moratorium is lifted after July 10th. Um, so this will be a really good tool to have in our pocket. Um, and the last thing I just want to kind of point out, which makes this program a little bit different, is that landlords actually can have access to the program as well. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure if they have to come directly through us or it's something they can do independently. I have to learn more about it. But the kind of caveat here at the program is that if a landlord participates or accepts the payment, they can only they have they can only accept or receive up to seven hundred and fifty dollars. And if the rent is a thousand dollars per month, let's say, they have to kind of eat the rest of that. That's the idea. Um, as a community, we can talk about how we can best support our landlords. But I just wanted to throw that out there because on the surface, it looks like a program that people could be able to access up to 750 and we can find other ways or, you know, um, support the balance. But if the, the idea is that the landlord participates, they can't take the tenant to court, you know, for that balance. Um, so it's, it's pretty intense. But like I said, we, we feel it's really important to um, definitely, you know, apply for and have available for us. So please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Faith. So, if somebody is again, this is this funding isn't assured, but how quickly would we know that if we're if we're going to receive access to this or not? So, I am to understand that it's a pretty quick turnaround. Um, we would have access to applying for it as early as July 6. I believe it's a system where we would have like a whole new website where we would go on as the kind of administrating entity. Um, and fill out like an application essentially. We'll be required to do some pretty rigorous reports um, because that's how the funding's actually going to come in. The funding's gonna be coming into us based on previous reports. There's a lot of fluidity with this money. Um, PHSA has the ability to, to move money around through counties as it's needed. So they're really kind of, it's not quite a reimbursement program which we're familiar with the federal, but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, no, that's so helpful. that's the idea. Well, just because we, power right now. Yeah. Well, no, just and uh, thank you, and just because we know this has been a lot of discussions about uh, evictions potentially and the moratorium on that ending. So this is good to get some relief to individuals um, within our community that uh, have property who need who are, are have been good with their tenants, but uh, I know they, they they also need to find ways that they can make sure that they can make it, make ends meet. So this seems like it helps both sides. But um, again, going back to the point we made during the COVID relief block grant, uh, we want to make sure that landlords and tenants understand what they're getting into by applying for this program. So, um, but as soon as we hear about this, I would think that we'd want to get uh, as much information out it about out it about it out there as possible. But then also getting some uh, questions answered as well. So, if we would receive this funds, would you your phone number at the Office of Adult Services be the contact number for this? 
That's correct. And at this very moment in time, the idea is that when people are calling in for rental assistance, we'll be able to screen them to see if they're a good candidate for this particular program and kind of triage them, you know, how we would typically. This just adds another layer. Um, moving forward, if we see, you know, how many folks we're able to serve and kind of what this program looks like, what the guidelines are, et cetera, we might be able to create like a mock um, application form for other agencies to complete on the client's behalf and submit to us. So there are a lot of options and there's a lot of freedom. But yes, at this very moment in time, um, our office would be the one to call for just rental assistance period um, and we'll do what we can to fit them with the program that's best. And again, what makes this different, this particular program different, is that families can receive assistance for up to six months. They have to qualify each month. And the rent arrears can go back as far as March 1st, which, again, is very similar to a lot of the other grants that we're all looking at. Thank you, Faith. Any other questions, comments for Faith? No, okay. All right. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Super. All right. Thank you very much, Faith. So, uh, we would look Thank to you. we would look to adopt the resolution uh, and then also uh, the, the submission letter. We could do that as one motion, two. It's up to you. However you want to do it. We'll do two. Two. Okay. All right. So motion to adopt resolution number fourteen of twenty twenty, authorizing the submission of a letter of intent to the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency for the rental assistance relief funding through the CARES Act. Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much, Faith. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate your time. Okay. Motion is carried. Uh, I, 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 Actually, you, I did kind of cover both did, items. Did you do both? Motion, I did. That's what I thought. So, okay. Yeah. Not, a, <laughs> not a worry. Okay. Uh, planning. Margaret, we'll turn it back to you. Okay. Thanks so much. The next four items. Essentially what this does is First three items. Uh, documenting You are the last party in the conference.
We've come a long way on this, and we want to thank everybody in planning who was uh, able to get this here. Uh, Sue was instrumental in this. Thank her for the work there, and Benny and Sydney Margaret and all the work we've all done on this. Uh, so this would be the, I think the, let's fingers crossed, knock on wood, but it would be the, one of the final actions we would take on this. So we look for a motion. Motion to approve the revised RCAP documents for the Equine Facility Project for Grange Fair. Then seconded. Any final discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion has carried. Okay. Uh, would there be a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve today's consent agenda. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion? Comments on this? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion has carried. Uh, anything to report on administrator's report, Margaret? Nothing. Okay. All right. Uh, Commissioner Higgins, the check run. Sure. Uh, somewhat smaller than average check run of one million four thousand seven hundred seventy-three dollars and sixty-five cents. Um, check of the week is to Center of Volunteers in Medicine. Great group. Uh, receiving a lot of uh, additional uh, needs during this time. Um, some uh, or several, perhaps uh, county. Um, uh, residents needed some basic needs medical, and it came to only $972.08. So thanks again to Center Volunteers in Medicine, both their staff and their uh, many medical-based volunteers. I'd like to also I'm going to be one of the organizations I look at very seriously. But you make a difference for many of our citizens. Absolutely. Big impact on with them. Absolutely. I'd like to uh, make the motion to approve the check run dated June 12th. Then move and second to, to approve today's check run. Any further discussion on the check run? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion is carried. Do we have uh, anything from the voter registration front? Uh, not today. Okay. All right. Yeah. Soon. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, any executive sessions to report? Martin. Okay. Uh, any questions? Gary or Evan, please. Obviously, this can just highlight what exactly has to be added today on this. I know there are different subcategories listed. That or, you know, what, what you Sure. Thank, thankfully, at this point, we just needed to give the categories. No, no dollar amounts at this point. Categories. We do, the only dollar amounts we have to give are the the total amount that we have been given, how much we're going to use for administrative costs, and then how much we're going to use for actual grants or program costs. So those are only the only three numbers that we give. We already know what the one is. That's how much we've received. And so uh, we think we're going to use the maximum amount for administrative costs, and then the remainder there is will be for program costs. But essentially, it's those broad categories, uh, but we're going to do our best to try to include any of the specific ones that folks might have been talking about. But, um, but yeah, we're, again, very pleased that we have the funds, uh, that we can distribute them, but they're finite. You know, they will they will be used up, and we want to make sure they have the largest impact they can. I know you're getting the information from Ryan. The rental assistance program sounds like it's targeted to different folks besides the parents of Penn State parents, uh, students. Or could it be? Uh, it seems like it's going to be predominantly for folks who uh, lost income, out of work. Um, that would be, that might be a, a one for faith in terms of if a parent's on the lease, they lost their job, could they recoup some of that? Uh, well, yeah, that's a, we'll, we'll check with, yeah, we'll check with yeah. faith. Yeah, yeah. How much that's going to be yet? Or, or I heard you said that's yeah. 750 a month for... It's yeah, seven, set up to seven fifty for six months, but there's certain strings attached. But the the state has hundreds of millions in that pot, so uh, 
hopefully it's where first come first serve we could we could help a lot of residents out that way part of that is that grant you mentioned i heard so i heard uh fair is even obviously person there's other things that bring it uh you know just i know we don't have all the figures in front of us here but i think a lot of small businesses and fair you know a lot of people that depend on those types of things are anxious to hear what they could be getting to help them out and uh you know any i guess even just a statement in terms of sort of at the top of the plate, obviously PPE is up there, there's a lot of things, but I, I guess my question is if you each of you wouldn't mind outlining if you have sort of a top three or top list of things maybe that you think could definitely have to get covered within this. All right, please. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll go first. Sure. Um, we're hearing about personal protective equipment from practically everyone. Um, and to Commissioner Dersham's point, if, if it's allowable by BCED, if the county or possibly even the counties through the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania could do a massive multi-million dollar buy and get great prices, and then we could distribute that uh, uh, out to the various groups. Um, I also think uh, another uh, major category is for our municipalities. There's 35 of them, they've all been affected. Uh, and uh, some of them, uh, perhaps uh, places like uh, Belfont, Phillipsburg, State College, um, maybe even Milheim, have active, vibrant uh, downtowns, or at least downtowns that were recovering and making progress. Uh, there might be uh, some ways to utilize uh, funds for planning and revitalization uh, related to COVID-19. And the biggest category for me would be our uh, small businesses and tourism. Um, you know, there's at least 1,500 companies in Center County uh, that would potentially be uh, able to use uh, these funds for replacement of PPE expenses, for planning, for cleaning supplies, and possibly for um, working and mitigating issues they're having with um, COVID. Uh, we haven't had a chance to check DCD yet, but as an example, let's say you're a small restaurant you just purchased or need to purchase some tables and chairs for outdoor dining. You have a horrible cash flow at the moment. How are you going to be able to pay for that? Potentially a county grant could, could help out and that would be very impactful for those businesses. Those are my three major ones at this point. I don't know if I can go with three. I, I'm just <laughs> I've, got, I've got five or six right off the top. Uh, business community obviously is a, is a major concern not-for-profits that, uh, that we rely on for so many different uh, causes in our community. Uh, education, whether that be Penn State, CPI, I mean, I, there's a, I think there's a whole whole element there that needs to be looked at. The healthcare community, I think uh, not the medical center and the other uh, healthcare providers, as well as the human services in our municipality. So I, I don't know that I can put it in three, but I can summarize that uh, if I had to put priorities, I would make sure that we were making all as many people as we can uh, try and navigate these uh, these tough times. And I think the business community probably is, is screaming at the top of the list right now. Yeah, I, I think I, I really in agree. We're, all, we're I think we're in agreement on, on this. Uh, this is, you know, we're really fortunate that we have $15 million that we can allocate throughout the community. And uh, we, I think one of the things that you know, it's been said by, said by others, but I'll repeat it here today, is there are certain businesses that if we would go back to the yellow phase, would need to close back down, and we do not want that to happen. And so the lengths that we can take, not only with this uh, $15 million, but also as a community to continue doing the masking, the hand washing, and the social distancing is so, so critical. We could make, it, we could make the best expenditures or the best allocations, but if we go back into uh, yellow or, or goodness, uh, the red phase, uh, you know, we would be at a very huge disadvantage. So that, so if we can make investments that also support our businesses, but also help us to keep the case count low, that's why the contact tracing, the quarantining, the isolating, we had an idea from a constituent about uh, basically making sure that housing insecure individuals, so people who are homeless, if they would uh, get COVID-19 or they would be in a position where they'd be exposed to it, that we could make sure that they have housing, if it's, a, if it's a hotel room or somewhere else, to make sure that they're not spreading that uh, at, a, at a day shelter or at a 
at a, a evening shelter once we get into the, the winter months. So there are all these types of issues and all these types of investments we can make to make sure this spread doesn't occur. So uh, yeah, I, I think we're really in agreement on this and it's just, we're excited if the DCD is gonna be looking at our application in the next few weeks and we can't wait to hear back from them to make this official. So um, we love DCD and uh, if, they need any, if they need anything from us, they can let us know. All, all that we know is that they, they need to get us the money by July 15th. That's all that we know at this point. Uh, hopefully it's soon. I mean, I think they understand more than anybody that this has to be. People are waiting, and so they've got to do their due diligence, but hopefully we get it sooner rather than later. Once you get it, obviously, then more than just a good process. Yeah, we've talked about that before. We've talked about a little bit roughly about mm -hmm. what kind of pots of money. We're obviously going to get more money than we have uh, able to allocate. So we need to make some decisions about what that looks like, uh, who we partner with to administer some of this. To go to Mr. Gershon's point, we do need to bring on some extra staffing for this, look for partnerships in the private sector to maybe contract out some of the administration of the business grants, for example. Uh, so we, we, we need to be uh, judicious about that and, and spend wisely. But uh, yeah, we, we, we appreciate the fact that as we get to mid-July, we're going to have conversations about dollar amounts and, and specific investments we can make. I think one of the other things that I'm looking forward to, and I think all three actually, and Margaret has been working so hard on this, uh, we need to meet with some of the, some of the big ticket investors here, make sure we're all on the same page about how those dollars are going to be allocated. I mean, we could have, we could have accountants and, and lawyers look at whether or not those, those, uh, expenditures are legal, proper, but at the same time, we have to, as a board, I think we have to have confidence that that's the best way to spend our money. I think Penn State's going to be at the table, Mountain Indy's going to be at the table. I think some of the other educational um, business community is going to be there. And I think we need to have a forum where we actually, okay, what's your plan? Or how are you going to spend your money? What can we expect to see with those expenditures? And I think that's the due diligence that we have to do, that we don't have time now before we actually make the application, make sure that we do this uh, properly and best value for our poor community. A uh, huge, huge disappointment in the back row here because I'm not one of the top choices in the next community. Oh, yeah. well, just the lounge. The lounge or what? Problem is, um, we, we talked about it for so long. We, we you know, it just, it, 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 just put it out there. <laughs> uh, we'll give you a mask. You yeah. know, when the election, when we were the prior to the time, the last time we finalized. We have an election meeting this yeah, afternoon. This afternoon. But but board, we should be wrapping it up. Yeah. Yep. yeah. We have the total count. Yeah. Was, the, was there a, what did this, That's not counting the uh, the independents. Okay. Yeah, you see, you know, the, the, that's just the two major parties. That doesn't right. include the Jedi Party, the Pirate Party, and all the other parties yeah. that Steve uh, brings up during his report. So we still have 100 so 100 yeah. Uh, Steve, was there any other surprises from the election? Was it the county process or anything? No, I think I think it actually went very smooth. And I, I again, I'll, I'll give my fellow commissioners credit for really working hard, making sure that. The, Challenge, of course, is that with a, I wouldn't say a dry run, but it would be a, a minor comparison to what we expect in November. So we really have to, to take the lessons we learned from this. And I want my fellow commissioners to expand upon that. No, well said. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to thank Mike because the mail in ballots, there were, what, what was the total number finally? Like 19,000? 19, 19, yeah. There were like 19,000 mail in ballots. Well, we've never had that number of mail-in ballots before. Um, normally, the absentees are hundreds to a couple thousand at most. Uh, Mike came up with a lot of procedures, policies, forms, um, uh, tracking, traceability, chain of custody. Um, and uh, I think we've got a good system in place now. I think it meets all the state requirements. And uh, we've got most of the bugs worked out. 
Commissioner Dershowitz's point, now we're going to have to scale this thing up to two, at least two, maybe who knows, three times uh, as many mail-in ballots uh, in November, and yet we still have the same time frame to count. We're guessing that come November, they're probably not going to want the uh, If my math is correct, we're 20 weeks away from the general election, and so it sounds like a long time, 140 days, but in reality, it's uh, going to be fast approaching, and it, it, we will probably have the ballots ready in late September, early October. Um, in, the, in the general, in the primary election, there's always a, that concern about, I mean, we didn't know when the primary election was going to be held uh, for, for, you know, a few, few weeks there, it was going to be moved back, but we're going to have the ballots even sooner, because there's not going to be as many court challenges, hopefully. With getting with folks getting on the ballot and um so we might even not only have more more time for people to request ballots uh but um well, more time to get them back in and so yeah it's 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 going to be a list but um i'm very confident that our community is going to come forward and help to make that happen there was the option if you request a mail-in you can get it yep. by the way right? i think in some people thought i got it. but there was the option you could check yes yeah okay All right, you bet, anytime. Uh, we would look at this time to, uh, and again, no executive session to go into. Okay, all right, a motion, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn at 10.53. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you all. Yes, that's right. Yeah.